coming to the art or the thing of spin, coming to the art of uh, spin bowling, I think it's an art, it's science as well. See, I did not, personally, I have to be very honest that I did not know anything about spin bowling. I just came in and ran and bowled a leg spin, a top spin, and a googly and a skinner. So that came naturally to me. So when things went wrong, you don't know what are the things that you do or are doing wrong. Hence, you don't know what is it that you need to correct. So once you do something wrong, for hours and hours together in the nets, you are making a, a bad habit as a consistent habit, if you know what I mean. If you're bowling with the correct technique over a long period of time, then you're doing well. But if you're using the bad technique, you're forming a bad habit with a wrong technique and you end up bowling badly because you've done it over and over again, the so-called muscle memory and the biomechanics not working right. So now, with all this technology in place, in fact, I've learned more about spin bowling when I started doing commentary. I've learned more about spin bowling in the last 22, 23 years of commentary. So people might not understand, why did this guy play at 17 and last play at 21? Because I didn't know the art and the science of spin bowling. Now, having worked on television as a commentator, I've seen millions and millions of replay, and I've also interacted with some of the greats. Krishna Singh Baby, sir, Mr. Venkatraman, Prasanna, of course, Chandrasekhar was a great bowler, but he was a man of very few words. Whereas Prasanna, Baby, and uh, Chandra, Venkatraman would talk a lot. And Venki B, an engineer, would talk about angles, both from portion and stumps, both from wide and stumps. And Vishen was what? Pure magic. Pure magic with this run out, with this slide, with this deception. And Pras was a beauty also. So it was great interacting with them. And you learned a lot from them. And they're on bill with the experience and see, looking at visuals while doing commentary. I mean, you become a student of cricket, a student of spin bowling. You then start to realize every bowler has something different. While we have coaching courses in NC, level 1, level 2, and level 3, well, they go through a tough grind, they work really hard, and they get their certificates. And these certificates are important to qualify to get a job as a coach, whether it's a batting coach, fielding coach, or a bowling coach, fast bowling coach, or a spin bowling coach. But I feel if you go with those certificates, you're only going on theory. So you're almost going to be coaching everybody according to theory, which I mean is in a similar manner. But each and every bowler, like you mentioned earlier, has potential that it comes to. You should never tamper or take away the natural uh, flair that comes with a particular person. You should develop the natural flair or the natural talent that he's come up with. God has given him certain talent. You enhance it fine-tune it and master it. So if you can go in the way, and you should always look at it at a positive side. Very often we see on social media, and I have a lot of fun on social media, but if you speak positively, if you want anybody to listen to you, first I must say, which is you're a good author, then you start listening. But I think you will be much better if you can do uh, certainly, I mean, a few different things are different. But earlier in our days, people would say, good ball, well ball, bad ball. Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I bowl a bad Why did I bowl a good ball? What were the reasons? So, to get a cricketer's attention or to win a cricketer's <laughs> trust is very important. Because nowadays, with so many careers on the line, if the player doesn't trust you, He's not going to follow what you say. Which is why I think uh, the Arun was such a successful commodity as a bowling coach. He made sure that he won the trust of the bowlers and he empowered the bowlers. I mean, in his own words, I'm saying, he empowered the bowlers to bowl as they wanted. He just fine-tuned them here and there with a technique and mental approach. Arun was very strong in his mind. And... Uh, he did a wonderful job because all the bowlers 
playing under Arun. They're so comfortable with what Arun said. They trusted Arun 100% and whatever Arun said, they followed. That's why we developed into a country that were producing fast bowlers by the dime. And we had terrific fast bowlers performing overseas. Remember those wins in Australia? Remember those wins in England? Why do you want to play on turning tracks when you have just the two spinners? You should play on tracks where you have more fast bowlers, you have better fast bowlers than most of the other opposition. And you probably have a batting banner that can play uh, fast bowling. It's not going to be swinging all day in Delhi and Chennai and uh, all these venues. You're much better off playing on a wicket where the ball comes onto you fast, a Virat Kohli or a Rohit Sharma or anybody can hit through the line of the ball. You're not going to be struggling at the 120 for 6 where the lower order has to come and back. You have good quality of fast bowlers as good as the opposition, if not better. Think about that. You should be proud of the fast bowlers that you have produced. B. Arun has produced a pool of fast bowlers which have gone unused in India. Yes. You could have beaten Australia. You could have beaten any country in India with your fast bowling. In fact, the fast hmm. bowlers were sitting outside, losing valuable game time, wickets time. By sitting outside, you'd learn nothing. You learn nothing. So I think Can having it. developed a good pool of fast bowlers, we haven't used them properly. So LS, with so much of knowledge you have, with, you have acquired so much. I've seen you at uh, before the match. And, uh, you know, during breaks at times, you would go and spend time with the bowlers uh, during international matches. Um, so, what stopped you from uh, the, uh, lending your knowledge to the Indian team, your, your spin, spin, spin uh, knowledge? Well, uh, I did offer my services to Rahul Dravid when he was announced as coach. And uh, Rahul said, just said, listen, you're too much senior to me. And I will not be comfortable working. Uh, I will not be comfortable for you working under me. I mean, that was the reply given to me. So I said, okay, so be it. But uh, we are all working for the BCCI. We are all working for enhancing the game of cricket in India. We are all working for the betterment of our cricketers. We are all working to win the World Cup, to win Test Series, to win the World Test Championship. We are not working for X, Y, Z. We are working for an organization called the Board of Control for Cricket in India. So I felt hurt again. I mean, the second time that I felt hurt was when I was said, uh, when this thing was told to me that uh, I was uh, too senior to be working under Rahul Dravid, by Rahul Dravid himself. 